Greetings, everybody. This is 480 Volts, and it is time to do our next stage, Hang 8. Which is one of my favorite... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to save state for this one just because... Basically, I'm going to do a speed run of this stage as quickly as I can. That was a bad speed run. This is why I'm going to save state. I, I promised I wouldn't save state. But, uh, you know what? Okay, what what gives? I have lost I have lost the flow of high jumping and spinning. But I'm just gonna speed run my way through. Oh lord, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a this is gonna be a fun video. I think I'm just gonna have to edit out any mistakes I make. I made it that time. Go! Oh. There we go, made it that time. Return of the Piranha Plants! Alright, a little timer just started. Uh, depending on how fast you got to this point, the timer would have less time on it, and I just ran. I am trying to get to the end of the stage before the time limit runs out. Uh, if I don't, I will not die, but I will... Don't mess with that checkpoint. Don't mess with you. Just jump up here as fast as your furry little butt. Ignore that. I'm missing uh, some crystal. I don't think I'm going to make it. I need a mask. A little boogie board. Press the circle button. Oh no, 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 no. Press the circle button, you can get a little boost. Go! Tell me I'm at the end. There's my gem. If you make it before the time limit runs out, you get a secret gem. Okay, that's good. Now I'll just kill myself and actually play the stage. Normally. Okay. Because I still got the secret gem. That was the secret gem. Um, kind of an annoying feature. A um, little time attack, but, eh, well, I'm okay with it. But now we're actually going to get the normal gem that involves getting all the crates. And yes, Return of the Piranha Plants. I spun too early because the game lagged. Um, this is some of my favorite music, this stage. And you probably can't even hear it because the sound effects are so loud. So we're going to jack it down to uh, 50%. That's so much better. I don't care about the sound effects. I don't even hear Crash sound effects anymore. You know, the sound he makes when he spins, the mask, when he jumps on something, the, the breaking of crates and collection of wumple fruit, I don't hear those sounds anymore. You know, they, they're, they become so engraved in my brain that they're just natural parts. Just like this little flip that Crash does when he jumps, I don't even see that anymore. I stopped seeing that by the time I finished the first Crash game. And then I, after a while, like, after playing this game, I just stopped and looked. I was like, wait a minute. And I looked at Crash and I really looked at him. I was like, oh yeah, his model and animations are different than the uh, first game. But he still does the flip. Now let's get on our bonus platform. Also, what setting are we in? It never, I never could figure out. It's, it's not, it's, it's... Like, I want to say swamp, and the water definitely looks swampy, but it's like, it's too bright and colorful to be a swamp. It has more of a tropical feel, especially with the boogie boarding, but, or the motor boarding, but it doesn't, uh, it, the, the setting itself, like the, the scenery doesn't look very tropical, I mean, I guess it's kind of jungle-ish, but it's not really tropical. So I'm not sure what kind of setting this would be. It just it seems too bright and colorful to be considered swamp. Lake? I don't know. I, I always get the vibe of like being in a public park place. Anyway, this right here is the blue gem. 
which if I had not gotten in Turtle Woods, well, this would just be like a little, it would be the outline of a gem. But let's jump on it. I'm stuck on the platform, I can't get off. When a platform stops spinning like that, in the original Crash, if you jumped on a gem platform, I always thought this was interesting. If you jumped on a gem platform, it would take you wherever, and when you dismounted, it would immediately leave. This one doesn't. This one just sits here. It's a dead platform now. And it will be there till the end of time. And yes, as you can hear, we the music has gotten darker. And I would say faster, but it's lagging all over. It's, it's tripping all over itself, probably because of my recording. Which kind of bo bothers me. Go get the soundtrack. Or listen to the soundtrack! Crap. We don't have to make it through to it through an entire stage without dying to get the gem, so that means I'm going to keep all my failures in. I'm pretty sure all the crates I got from the bonus round. Yeah, I don't have to do the bonus round again, so all that, it kept all that. I just lost my mask. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that death in. I'll keep the deaths in. Like I said, this game doesn't matter anymore. And lives are not an issue. You'll you'll rack up on lives. Um It's interesting how the gem path in the original crash, I mean like the gem would take you to an area that you couldn't reach. Sometimes the gem platform was nothing more than a stepping stone for you. In this game, it like it takes you to a whole new area, a whole new side of the game, or on the stage that you didn't know was there, which is actually quite treacherous. Look, we got checkpoints here too. All right, and um, well, you know the uh, original, or rather, yeah. Oh, I hate this part. Really wish I had a mask. No! Forgot there were nitros there. If you die, if you keep consistently dying, eventually the game feels sorry for you and will grant you a mask upon respawning. It's it's kind of cool that this game will actually help you out. Crash three did the same thing. Crash one, no, you 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 were given you used what you were handed to or what was handed to you. Alright, just got to time this just right now. Hopefully there's no nitros. Well, I'm about to get a life, so that's good. What was I about to say? Oh yeah, um, these, I'm going to call them lake levels. I don't know what else to call them. These water lake levels. They're very, they're very non-linear. I mean, they're linear, but like they're very, um, like the bonus rounds, the secret areas, everything. I mean, the screen changes when you get there, so it makes it feel like an unreachable air, like the gem pathways. Here's our exit gem. Makes it feel like it's a completely separate world that you can't get to outside of this gem platform. And the only reason I mention that is because there are other stages where this is not the case. And, uh, yeah, these hippos, you step on them, they sink into the water, so don't stand on them. They will eventually pop back up. And yeah, the gem platform, it dropped us off literally exactly where it took us off. You'll not always be that fortunate, so. Sometimes when you go in the gym, you'll have to actually backtrack. Don't get sucked into the whirlpools, obviously. Don't touch the mines. I'm about to. Okay, now what, what the heck? I always thought it was cool you could do tricks if you boosted on the uh, arrow pads. Not that it does you any good. Yeah, we're about to clean this stage out. I mean, we're going to get all three gems. All three gems? All, all two gems and the uh, crystal. Get out of here. Alright. Game's going too fast now. Alright, what do we got? Got a crystal, got a gem, got another gem. Three 
crystals. Not bad. I see you are getting the hang of it. I need to conserve power. I will communicate with you again after you retrieve the fifth crystal. Okay. Whatever. I like his animations now. His eyebrows and his hair and his, the whole shape of his face do weird things, depending on his facial expression. That's something the first game never did. It's also something the third game doesn't really do either. Now this here is the pits, and yeah, as you can see, it's just like Turtle Woods, except, well, it's not raining anymore. We got our bird friends, so watch out for them. Oh lord. That's the safest way. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about, repeating level motifs and music, which the first game did that too, quite a bit. That's fine. Right. Okay, game's moving too fast right now. Like, it's... it's Part of my emu emulator is messing up right now. So, yeah. <clears throat> also... Yeah. Ah! There we go. Give me a minute, I just got a minute. Alright, just had to... I had to take care of something. Alright, what do we got here? Alright, now we got the uh, turtles with the buzz saws on them. You don't want to jump on them. You can, you can, uh, it's kind of interesting if you slide into them, they'll do that. And you, you know, you can use them as trampolines and all that. And, you know. There you go. Or you could just straight up spin them. Alright, now we got a fork in the road and I'm going to go left. That is the standard rule when it comes to crash games. When you go come to a fork on the road, always go left first. I don't know if that's a rule or not, I just made it up. Hey, you know what? It is a rule because it's something I've just learned from experience. And I should probably leave that checkpoint and not bother with it. I don't know if I've even gotten any checkpoints yet. So I'm, I'm going to leave that checkpoint. Okay, I would like to kill all of the enemies right now because I'm going to backtrack. And I already lost one mask. Okay. Oh boy. This could be bad. I see our crystal. And I'm not entirely sure what that exclamation crate did. I'll take care of you guys all. I think we're coming up to the end. Yeah, this is the other side of the fork. So hopefully I can uh, backtrack without falling into a pit. <sighs> because of my emulator lag, this could be a problem. Take it slow now. Alright. There's more pits, I know. And no, this is not why the stage is called the pits. Okay, sweet. So now I don't have to, you know, I did that on purpose, because now if I die, all the crates that I've gotten up ahead are already ungotten, or they're already gotten, so I don't have to worry about any of that crap. Now let's go right. I think the uh, exclamation crate did something on this side, so it's a good thing I went left. just because I felt like it. Bye. I don't really care about you guys. Oh, chain reaction. Yeah. So the exclamation crate did that. Okay. Ugh. A little bit of lag. And here's the other side of the fork. Oh, crash games are notorious for their forks in the roads, aren't they? Or are they? I really don't even, never really thought about it. Now, this is why it's called the pits. You're going to have a lot of these. So I'm not even going to deal with them. Ah! Oh, now this is interesting. The half metal, half... Um... Hang on. Yeah, the half metal, half wood crates. 
There's the only way to break them is to body slam them. They're wooden crates with metal frames. Body slamming is the only way to get rid of them. Haha. -ha. Okay. See, in an area like this, crawling is uh, is needed. See, if this was a Mega Man game, he would just slide under and he'd be sliding until you got out of here. No, no, Crash is going to crawl. Alright, you know, here's what I'm going to do. This is a little trick I always used to exploit. Hit the middle one. Once. Oh yeah, don't fall off this platform. Okay. Now, grab that. Hit the outside one and that outside one. Okay. So now I've hit all of those crates at least once. Now just bounce off of them. Bam, bam, bam. Didn't get any Wumpa Fruit from it, but you know what? I don't feel like it. It was like 30 pieces of Wumpa Fruit I didn't get. Well, actually, technically 27. I don't feel like dealing with you. Or you. And there we go. There's our gem. Alright, so this stage is knocked out. It wasn't showing the gem for some reason. It better tell me I got the freaking gem. Alright, so. There we go. We did all that. So we have one more stage left in this warp room, and I will tackle that stage in the next video, and then we will also tackle what comes after that stage. I am 480 volts. My emulator was just speeding up really, really fast. Uh, I will see you all next time. Farewell!